Well, welcome to uh, Option Trading Tools and Tips on Power E-Trade. This is Sean Howell, and we are continuing with the Options Boot Camp. And every single second of this session is going to count because we're down to the last 30 minutes of the trading day. And I want to show you, uh, I want to show you our platform. I want to go ahead and execute a couple of trades. When I say execute, and people are like, ooh, that sounds bad. I want to complete a few trades just so you can see them happening. I'm going to move quick. This is being recorded, uh, but I think this is where the rubber meets the road. Let me get through our disclosure here. So real quick, way back in college in, uh, what was this like, 87, 88, I went to UC Santa Barbara, so did Dave Whitmore. I wanted to get um, my scuba certification, and in the evening when I was going uh, to get to get my, my scuba stuff, we had two hours of classroom stuff. Man, I just wanted to get in the swimming pool and put the scuba tanks on and you know start doing all that stuff. This is where we put the scuba tanks on. This is where we put the fins in, and this is where we start to test what we have been teaching you in boot camp. And in all honesty, it is easier to be in my position right now than yours because there is so much coming at you. I understand that. Don't be overwhelmed. It takes time. It takes a couple of, of you know opportunities to see how it goes. Um, fear not. I, it's very, very rare that somebody goes, Oh, I get it. I get everything. I'm ready to go and do it. It's a very, very gradual, very baby step. And, you know, go back to my scuba thing. I may have been comfortable in the swimming pool, but take me out to Refugio Beach in February with eight foot waves crashing and a storm blowing and the wind and kelp and great white sharks. And it's a little bit of a different situation. So let's, uh, hey, thanks, Marianne. Go Gauchos. Olay. Let's, uh, let's get into it. Um, so I'm going to show you Power E Trade, which is free to you. It is our advanced platform, and we're doing it ahead of the more basic platform. One, it's better. Two, it's free. And three, I want to show you what this thing does. Not that Dave's not going to do a terrific job on eTrade.com, but I think you're going to like this better. If you're already using platforms, or especially if you're using Power eTrade, how confident are you? We don't want you to be intimidated by it. We want to show you how this was built for traders by traders, and we're always taking our customer input and us, one of the strangest questions I get is, do you actually trade options? Yes. This is what I specialize in. This is my expertise. Of course I utilize these things. And, of course, I utilize the platform. So I want to share with you not only as an educator, but I want to share with you as an option trader the things that I like about it as well. So let me know that. Oh, and another real quick push, etrade.com forward slash events. We've got the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday sessions. Well, we're talking real-world market data and, you know, what's going on with this interesting stock. And, hey, check out this option strategy. Let's talk about the pros and cons of that. Maybe that will help you with, you know, one of your own, one of your own positions. Okay, we've got the confidence going. Uh, and then I'll check again at the end of the session. But I want to do my screen share. So let me get that set up. It may just take a second for me to get my window showing. And let's hope that it's going to share. If it's not, because sometimes things get a little bit weird, I'm not seeing that. So I'm going to go and make it a little bit different. So hang on while I display my whole screen. Dave, let me know if that's coming up. I'm not seeing anything yet. Okay, I've got I've got backup systems running today, so hang on. Okay, let me give it a shot again. Yep, I'm seeing everybody saying no. Sometimes our screen share does really weird things. So hang on, let me switch. Okay. Let me get this logged in. I'm going for a different computer here. Just to fill the dead air there, folks, uh, just want to 
recognize Sean is bringing up screen share right now, so whatever silence you're hearing, um, you know, that's why we're working a little bit on the back end. And yeah. sometimes if the audio or whatever drops out, refreshing your browser will usually help, so you can check that out. Okay, I'm seeing, I'm seeing now it's going to share. Okay, that's really strange. All right, let me swap out laptops here for desktop and Dave please tell me you are share you are seeing my screen share I got you all right 2012 iMac saves the day versus the 2023 MacBook Pro all right so you're seeing the screen I've logged into my little demo account a little tiny three thousand three hundred dollar account um, on complete view once you've logged in you're going to see something called Launchpad. If you click on that, I have a number of applications that you may not have. But you will definitely have Power E-Trade. If you don't have it, give us a call. You will definitely have Paper Trading. Paper Trading is really just the Power E-Trade simulator. You know, it's good. It can be a little clunky. Things get weird because sometimes all of our, our servers are, are driven towards our live platform. But, you know, launch this, you got $300,000 of pretend money you got real data there. You can enter orders. It's good to kind of learn the keystrokes, but understand it's not real-world stuff. So things don't always act like they do in the real world. That being said, um, I'm going to launch paper, paper. Uh, excuse me, Power E Trade for this live account, and let's get going. Uh, by the way, and this is hopefully maybe how you came here today. I would say do not click the don't show me this again. I know this popping up every time can be a little bit bothersome, but this is where we'll promote to you things like we're planning to do an options forum, which would be more content kind of on this continuum that you're already on, um, maybe in June, maybe in July, but that's our plan to do that. So let us know kind of what you want to see as far as the next level of options training. But this is one of the areas that we're going to promote it. If you say don't show it again, you'll never see the pop-up even if we're changing the promotion. So I just clicked through it. Okay, and then uh, let me go ahead and quickly pull up, you know, something exciting like McDonald's stock. I'm Sean, going to buy. All I'm seeing, yeah. All I'm seeing is the complete new page. I, I don't have Power E Trade up here. That's what you're showing. Okay, got it. Now you I should see it now. Yeah, I didn't hit the uh, share the new tab. The new tab popped up. So a couple things about Power E Trade. One. It is not software. It is HTML5. I'll translate that to more basic language. You don't need to download anything at all. eTrade.com, log into your account, click Power, click Power eTrade, and it will load up. So now you're running eTrade.com and you're running Power eTrade. It's not software. Another nice thing about it is that if I switch to, like, my son's computer, hey, can I look at your computer? And if I log into eTrade.com and I launch, I look at, at however I've customized it. He's also an eTrade customer. But because I've logged in using my ID, all my settings, all my chart settings, my watch list settings, all of those things kind of follow me around. That's pretty cool, too. It's real-time and streaming which means that everything I'm seeing here is real-world quotes. Across the top, you've got three basic tabs. You've got trading and then sub-tabs like quote, chart, options, trade lab, strategy. Think. I will not hit all of these, but I want to give you a general overview. Markets, again, if I want to scan the market, my watch list, what's going on in the market, news, and what about earnings calendars, cool. And then for the accounts, I've got my open orders, my positions, some more advanced stuff like risk slide, which again, we teach a lot of these, etrade.com forward slash events, but I just want to give you the general overview. So let's say that you wanted to get, uh, you wanted to look at McDonald's. I went ahead and I typed in MCD. Maybe I don't even know the symbol. I could just start, start typing the name here. Do I want McDonald's Japan? No, I want McDonald's US, symbol MCD. Click on that and I have my chart. If I want my options chain, here are those sub-tabs I talked about. I'm going to click options. Now, my options chain probably doesn't look like your options chain because I've customized them. Follow my cursor. I'm going all the way to the right of my screen, and then I'll zoom in. You see those three dots? This is something that I want you to, to recognize. Anytime you have sort of a layout like this, which is like an Excel spreadsheet layout type thing, and you see these three dots, 
click on those three dots. And I get a bunch of different options from there, no pun intended. One of them is select columns. When Dave was doing his session this morning and people were saying, hey, that's really cool. How do I add things like theta, delta, gamma? Well, on the left-hand side, all of these are the things that you can add to your columns. There's a lot of things to add in here. I think it's important that you just add the things that you want. I like the bid and the ask to be separate columns. Someone asked me this morning, is there a way that you can combine the bid and ask into one column? Yeah, you just bring that over. I don't like having the bid and ask as one column, but apparently somebody does because someone asked me about it today. I know Dave does. I know Steve does. I don't, so I keep mine separate. But you can bring it over. You just click plus. And then maybe you want to bring it up a little bit higher. Well, then you can bring it up higher if you want. And if you don't want it at all, like I don't, you get rid of it. So for me, I've got the bid, I've got the ask, I've got the time decay component called theta, I've got the relationship of the option to the underlying stock, which is my delta, I've got my, my rate of change of the delta, which is the gamma, I know we haven't talked about the, that yet, but as you learn that, uh, you may wanna add it, you may not. I know that we mentioned a little bit about volatility today, in fact, Ken said the way that we can, it's, we can measure the changes, expected changes of the option due to a change in the volatility as Vega. If you don't get Vega, you boot that guy out. Probability of being in the money at expiration, if you understand that, and again, we'll teach that in the future, but you can incorporate that or throw it out. I don't usually need open interest or volume because I'm usually trading S&P 500 stocks, which usually have a lot of liquidity and they usually have a lot of option contracts to trade. So for me, this is space that I don't need. I know one of the things that Steve likes to include is Steve likes to include something like the theoretical price. So he may drop that in. Again, you customize it. And then if you save it, if I pull up my son's computer, even though I'm saving this on my old iMac, but if I pull up my son's computer, it's all saved. Now he's a Mac user. Dave's not a Mac user. If I borrow Dave's computer and I log into eTrade.com and I launch Power eTrade, it's kind of cool. Even on his non-Mac, it all follows me. So I would say that it, you know, it kind of travels with you wherever you go, which I think is pretty cool. And another thing, I'm an iPad user. So, yeah, we've got the great mobile app, but really with my big 12.9-inch iPad, I prefer to use Power eTrade non-mobile. That's just my preference. But you've got all these choices, and sometimes I do things on eTrade.com. Sometimes I do Power eTrade on my laptop. Sometimes I, I'll use the mobile on my phone, and sometimes I'll use Power eTrade on my iPad. Again, lots and lots of flexibility there. So I've added my, my uh, uh, options columns that are relevant to me, just the data that is important to me. And from here, I can move this around. I can just drag and drop. I think that's kind of cool. I can bring in these sidecars, as I call them. I can bring in some other modules, like this. On the right-hand side, I'm clicking those dots, and I bring it in. Now, again, I'm gonna execute a trade here. I'm just gonna look at McDonald's. We know what they do. I'm not gonna analyze it, but I am gonna say this. Look, the stock is down today. So I'm gonna buy a put option. I'm just doing this for the sake of, of showing you how things work. A Couple of ways that I could do it. Let me show you the way that I think you may think you need to do it. In the, uh, let me clean this up too. In the upper right-hand corner, see that trade button? That trade button is on every single screen. You can click that, let me bring this up, and then you can go through and start building a trade ticket. This is very old school. Oh, I don't wanna do stock. Uh, I wanna buy a put. And I want to buy one contract of, no, I don't want this expiration. I want that expiration. No, I don't want this strike. I want that strike. You could go through and fill this out very manually. To me, that's old school. That's like what, what Dave and, and Rick and Steve and I used to have to do, you know, back in the day. If I want to look for an expiration that goes out, let's say maybe, I don't know, let's say six weeks. Well, this expiration goes out two days. This one goes out nine days. If I want to go out six weeks, how far out do I have to go? I have to go out, let's see, about to the April 
of 2023. If I click that, it just loaded that one. See the click, the, the little check mark? If I don't want to look at this one, I'll click again. So I'm just looking at the April 2023 option, which expires in 44 days. If I want to buy the at the money option, McDonald's is just about 265. The at the money option would be right about here. Remember in my session where I said, this isn't the best option. I'm not saying anything is best. The at the money option is the one that people tend to, I think, understand the most. If I want to buy that, you'll see how this is in our E-Trade purple. If I want to buy, buyers, um, so the market is asking you to pay $5.75 per share. So therefore, one contract would cost me $575. If I click, you'll see that it went green. You'll recall that from my screenshots. And then down below, there's a little screen down here that's giving me some information about the trade that I just clicked on, right? I've got buy one put with a limit price, giving me the maximum profit, giving me the bid and the ask, giving me the delta. Let me shrink that down and let me instead open that ticket up. It's already filled out most of the information. I'm trying to buy one contract. Ah, you know, let's make it two. No, let's make it one. I can change these any way that I want. I'm coming in with a limit, and I'd set it up at 550. The market's moved. Again, it's real time and streaming, so it's changing in front of me. Now the market is asking me to pay 570. You know, I could click here and go up and spend 570. But let me see if I can negotiate a midpoint. Hey, anybody, I know you want to, oh, it just moved on me. Hey, anybody want to go at 558? So I'm getting the trade ready to go. Now, here's something that I think is super cool about this, and, and it's really good, especially for people that are just getting started. I could preview the trade or say, but we're not done yet. There's kind of an under, um, there's another sub tab here that I want to spend some time on, snapshot analysis. If I click this, and you'll recognize these, oh, I got to go up, I got to round the number up. If I click on this, it's going to give me my maximum profit, $25,940. That's how much I would make if McDonald's went to zero in the next six weeks. Look, that's not going to happen. That's why it's giving me 0% probability of that happening. But there is a maximum loss. The most I can lose is 560 bucks, giving me a 53% chance that I'm going to lose that money. My break-even is 259 So remember, when I buy a put, go back to Rick's session, stocks at 260 265 I need it over the next six weeks to drop to 259.40 in order for me to reach a break-even point. So by expiration, it's got to be down to 259.40. Now, let's say that it is down to 259.40. Look at my little hockey stick diagram here, and let me shrink it out a little bit. The more the stock falls, the more my profit goes up. So let's say I think that McDonald's, for no other reason than to give you an example, is going to be at $235 at expiration. All right, that's about as close as I can get with my twitchy finger here today. Right about, oh, come on, maybe I can do a little better. No, nope, I can't. <laughs> Let's say I think it's going to be at 236.83. It's telling me that the theoretical price of my option that I'm thinking about buying right now for $560 would be worth 2256 That's kind of cool, right? So I can kind of run with my prediction. What if I say, oh, I think it's only going to be at, uh, theoretically, I think it's going to be at a price of 256 All right, then I'll make about 310 at expiration. If I snap my fingers and it dropped to 310 the theoretical profit or loss right now with the snap of my fingers is 498 Well, what if it goes the other direction? Well, if it goes the other direction, I'm losing money. But do you see how it flatlines there? I can't lose any more. Right? If it keeps going up, then I, I, I'm, out of, I'm out of my loss. Okay, that's a cool setup. So if I say, okay, I understand what I'm doing here. I'm bearish on McDonald's. I'm not saying I am, I just want to give you an example. I'm ready to move forward. I'm going to say preview. And we call this the readback screen back in our, our broker days. Mr. Customer, that's myself. Uh, you want to buy an April 21st of 2023, 265 put, 560 limit, it's going to cost me $560 and a penny. That's an exchange fee plus 50 cents commission. I get the active trader discount for my demo. You may pay 65, it's 15 cents difference. 
How does that affect my buying power? Okay, everything looks good. I'm going to send that order. Now, I don't know if the market moves. In fact, I can see the market didn't move because I got the order filled. See it down here? That guy just popped up. So I got that order filled. Now that I have that position, I go up to accounts. And first, let me just look at the orders. So there's my order, McDonald's, uh, filled uh, one at 560. That's me getting the order filled, okay? But let's go ahead and go into positions and let's see that McDonald's order. There it is right there. And I'll zoom in here. Lots of super cool features here. Lots and lots of things that this can do. Let me try to give you a little better image by zooming like this. There we go. So one of the things is I can hover. If I hover, a little sub menu drops down. And if I put my cursor over, it will tell me, place a trade. If I see that, that quote, I can get a quote on it. That brings me back to the option chain. This will give me a chart. In fact, it'll even give me a chart on the option if I want a chart on the option. And then this is like some custom grouping, more advanced stuff. That's kind of cool. So hovering does something for me, but clicking does something for me as well. Let me shrink this down again so you can see. I'll go back. I'm clicking on the row, and when I click on the row, I get a couple of interesting things here. One of them is quote, chart, options. I can set an alert. Do you remember I talked about the exit plan? Let me click on that and show you what I get. Hey, so if my profit target, if I want to make, I don't know, let's say that I want to sell this thing if it goes to 12 bucks, and that would be a $6.40 change from cost, that would be 114% gain, but I want to dump it if it goes down to, I'll just plug in a slightly different number, if it goes down to $3, so I'm creating a profit target and I'm creating a stop loss. So I'm, I'm creating a one cancels the other. Hey, it's kind of binary. Either I walk with this much profit, 114%, or I walk with this much loss, and I can go and I can create the order. I think that's a really cool feature. It at least gets you thinking about how and when you might, uh, you might exit the position for either a realized gain or a realized loss. I think that's pretty cool. Let me go back here again. And let me hover. And again, I'll, I'm going to zoom. I'm going to hover. And then I've got some other, uh, some other uh, tabs here. One of them is an adjust tab. And one of them is a close tab. And one of them is a roll tab. And then again, we get some further ones. Let's say you just wanted to close this position. All you have to do is click here, and it loads the ticket up. The ticket's loaded in front of me. I can sell that 265 put. No, I don't want to sell it right now because I want to keep using it as an example. But that's how quick and simple it is. I don't need to create that order ticket. And even if you don't know what an iron condor is and you're looking at this saying, wow, Sean, that's really busy, whatever it is, don't be intimidated by how to close that. All you really have to do is, again, you could hover and you could hit the close and it loads up the ticket and I can close a four-legged iron condor, if you don't know what it is, you'll know there's a lot of working pieces to it. So very quick, very quick in the click to close it out. I think that's cool. Here's another way you can close it out. I've got the bid and the ask in my column. Remember I was talking about the three dots? If you wanted, you could click your three dots, and you could select different columns. One of the columns I have here is bid and ask. This means that I can click, if I want to close this trade out, another way to close it, I can click the bid, and it's loaded my ticket up. And I can preview it, and I can close it out. Now, I'm going to go ahead and buy a quick call option. Can't even see how much time I've got. And for the call option, I'm just going to buy 100 shares of Ford. Okay, I'm going to buy 100 shares of Ford. I'm going to click the ask, buy 100, and I'm going to pay market. I want to get the order done. I'm going to preview it. I'm going to send it, and I'm filled. Boom, done. Okay. Ken did the covered calls today. Great. You've got 100 shares of something in your account. In my case, that something is four shares. And you're like, huh, how do I do that covered call? Well, one, we could go back to the options chain for Ford, 
And let's say you wanted to sell an option that goes out, oh, I don't know, I'll say goes out 29 days. And you want to sell an option that has a probability of being in the money less than 15%. Well, the 14 has a 22% of probability of being in the money. This one has uh, less than 15. Now, in order to sell that, I would click the bid. That's creating a covered call. But that's a little old school. Let me go back to account, and let me go to position, and check this out. If I click on the row, you're going to see something here that says adjust, and you get a different menu. You're not going to see this on eTrade.com. There is one that says income. There's another one that says protection. There's one that says protection and income, and there's one that says repair to be, to be safe for the options forum. If you click income, since you own 100 shares, how could you derive income from the shares that you've got? Well, you could do a covered call. So let me just hit the create order and you'll see what it looks like. Sell one contract because it knows I have 100 shares in here of the March 23. Oh, no, wait. I don't want to sell March 23. I want to go a little further out. Great. Let's take it out to, I think I was talking to April 14th. And the strike price that I was thinking about, I don't quite remember exactly what it was. But maybe it was the 14. I could sell the 14 or I could sell whatever it was. Another way for me to do this. So selling one of the 15 and I'm going to get a whopping, looks like uh, a whopping seven cents. Not even that. Maybe I can get six cents. Estimated you'll receive again. Don't worry about the numbers. They're just small. Let me show you what I'm doing. Okay. Selling the April 14th, 15 call. I'm collecting a whopping six bucks after commission 549. That's not the relevant point. I'm going to send it. And I got it filled in like milliseconds there. Now, if I go back to my screen, you'll notice our system recognizes, hey, you just did a covered call, Sean. Now, I had a lot of questions during the covered call session. Hey, how do I close it out? What if Ford is coming down? And I, want to, and I want to get out of it. Am I trapped for 37 days? No way. You're not trapped at all. You can just close it out. So I could just go to my close, load it up. And now in the brokerage world, we call this an unwind. But all you're really doing is buying back that option and then selling those shares. I think that's pretty cool, too. Now, let's go ahead and go another, another level deeper. Let's say that you are worried about the covered call or excuse me, you're worried about the 100 shares, and you want to protect those 100 shares, okay? Let's click. Let's adjust protection. This is talking about RIC strategy. Create the order, okay? And maybe I only want protection until, oh, I don't know. Let me go ahead and say the end of the month. And I want protection stocks at uh, uh, wherever the stock is right now. I'll take it down. I'll say I want protection at $9.85. The reason we have these weird strikes is that Ford has issued a special dividend, and that made the strike prices get a little bit wonky. Now nah, that's too close. Let me say 1035. March 31st. And now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to afford myself some protection. So I'm coming in with a limit, trying to get midpoint. Let me preview that. Buy my put, March 31st. Let me send it. Oh, good. I'm not getting filled because I wanted you to see that. Now I'm going to modify the order. I'm going to say, oh, all right, you guys want three bucks? Fine. I'll give you three bucks. And then if I submit that, queued, filled, done. So now what I've done is I've actually created a caller. So I'm bringing in a little bit of money by selling a covered call, selling to someone the right to buy it at a higher price from me. And I'm using a little bit of that money, and I'm protecting myself until March 31st. Now, the reasons I may do this is maybe there's earnings next week, and I'm worried about something. Or maybe there's something going on with the EVs and, the, and GM and everything that I want some protection. But longer term, I'm okay with selling it at that higher price. Again, I'm just kind of riffing on things. Now, let's go ahead and buy a call. Let me see how I'm doing on time. David may have to give me a couple of heads up. Oh, I got one minute. So let me pop in and buy, see if I can beat the options market. I'm going to go into Disney, and I'm going to buy an option. Oh, I missed it. I missed it. 
So the market's closed. Now, that doesn't mean that I don't still get option prices, right? It's still, it's still good there, but it, I can't execute the orders. Market closes, the options market closes. Now, that being said, I could go over to paper trading. So Dave, afford me one more minute. I stopped sharing and I'm going to launch paper trading since I shortchanged everybody on talking about paper trading earlier. And another reason I'm launching paper trading, and I'll share my screen here again now that I've launched paper trading. Okay, Chrome, paper trading. Okay, I'm in paper trading now. And I know I'm in paper trading. Remember I said this was the Power E-Trade simulator? It is, but you know, it looks so much alike, be careful. Paper trade accounts. In the right-hand corner, it's in yellow, and there's another one. Um, I've got this little 24-hour button there, which means I can execute fake trades 24 hours. So I'm going to continue with my demo, and I'm going to go to Disney. And again, this is sort of like jumping in the swimming pool with your scuba tank. It's only 10 feet deep, so you can't really get the bins. Uh, and then someone was also asking, how do I know if there's, if there's leap? Well, there's a January of 2024, all the way out to June of 2025, 835 days. Anything more than a year would be called a leap. Look, call it what you want. It's really just a long dated option. There's really no other difference, you know, besides that. So let's say that I want to buy an option in Disney that goes out 37 days. And I want to buy in in the money call. Remember we talked about uh, deltas a little bit, the relationship. So I want to buy an in the money call and maybe I want to buy about uh, a 70 delta because I know that would look like the equivalent of 70 shares for the next 37 days. And I can see it's $665. In order for me to do that, again, for me, the fastest way is to click the buy. There's my ticket, great. Now, all your accounts start with 100,000. Mine's, you know, mine's gotten gone up. So I've got 171, but I've been, you know, burning through that um, with some other trades to, to provide examples. I'm buying one contract. You know, I would say, who cares if you have 100,000? Just use one contract so you understand how things move. Now, you'll notice when I was doing live trading, I was going at midpoint. That's real world negotiating. But when you're trading against basically, um, fake data, you have to buy at, at the asking price. In fact, to ensure that I get it, I'm going to say market, even though I wouldn't necessarily do that in the real world. So I'm going to come in and buy the 95 April 14th. And again, you've got the snapshot analysis, which is cool, right? Again, the more the stock goes up, the more money I make all the way to, to an infinite amount. And then my maximum loss is 665 bucks. My break even is 101.65. It's all laid out in front of you. If you hit the preview, uh, yeah, I missed it. <laughs> let me let me go ahead and come in and do and do limited market and see if I can go ahead and get this get this pretend order executed. And then queued, open, filled. Now, if I go to my position screen here, account positions. And oh, one, and then I'll show you a final a final tool here that I think is really cool. So I've got my Disney. It's a Disney call option. If I click, and then the last thing I'm going to show you here, you see these four little boxes. Um, we call these bento boxes, like like a Japanese bento lunch. If you click on them, then little unique tools show up. One of my favorite tools is the what if box, especially for beginning people. Hey, I know I bought that Disney call option, Sean. What if it went up 5%? Okay. Well, that would be a good thing, right? Yeah, but I understand as the stock goes up that maybe the volatility goes down. So let's say that the volatility comes down three percentage points, and all of that happens in the next 10 days. What if? Calculate. There's your what if right there. Okay, well, let's switch it around. What if the stock goes down 5% and I know the volatility would then go up and it happens in 10 days? Okay, then that position is down $298. I think that's really cool that we can do that. And then I click my bento box. 
And then what I think is the ultimate cool thing, and then Dave gets to show off, is this portfolio with Apple and ChargePoint, Disney and Ford and Lenar and Maxar in, in stock positions and option positions, what would happen to this portfolio if the S&P were to go up 5% and volatility were to go down 3%, go down 3% and all of that were to go down in 10 days. Oh, this portfolio would go for about 10 grand. Great. Let's play the, what if it were to go down and volatility were to go up? Same thing. There you go. I'd be down 11,000. So it it allows me to run some theoretical pricing models. So when people were saying, how did you guys get the price 10 days into, you know, how did you assume that? Well, we have to assume that things remain static, but if volatility increases, I can plug that in. On the more advanced calculators, I could plug in things like what happens if the Fed increases interest rates by 50 basis points. I can do those things, but this gets you a general gist of of how you can how you can kind of manage it. And then again, even though the market closed on me, I can still get in here and I can close out. I can close out these positions um, anytime I want practice the keystrokes just understand it's not always going to be um perfect and seamless okay i've crammed in a lot i know we had that little bit of a of a uh tech trade here and then you know another another note so we teach everything from you know very beginner stuff to what we're going to teach on the forum a little bit intermediate and then advanced stuff and get into things like iron condors don't fret if you're seeing things on my screen that you don't understand at this point in time. It, all in time, you don't need to know everything to, uh, uh, you know, to start executing the, hey, I understand the call option, I'm going to go buy a call option. Or I'm almost there, but I'm going to paper trade a call option. Okay, uh, with that, let us know sort of as you're wrapping up this session. Remember, we've got Dave showing off eTrade.com. Wanted to show you Power E-Trade while things are still live, but let me know now that you've kind of seen a little bit about the paper trading side and about the real platform. Are you feeling a little more confident, a little less confident? You know, what did what did that last, last session do for you? And, yeah, there's, the, there's the, uh, the one I was looking for. How do you feel now that we've kind of been through that? And then I will go to wrap. A couple of um, things that I want to be sure everyone knows uh, for you to see this. Uh, as far as the recording goes, eTrade.com forward slash bootcamp. We do a lot of education to get the full the full breadth of that education, including the on-demand session, eTrade.com forward slash event. In order to see what we've got over the horizon as far as on our calendar, bookmark eTrade.com forward slash events and register for the events as they pop up, usually a month to a month and a half in advance. And then if you don't see that I'm teaching something like covered calls or a diagonal spread, look in the on-demand library under options, or if you want to learn more about the tools that we're showing, like the earnings move analyzer, then you would go to platform sessions, and, and you'll go ahead and see that. With that, I'm going to go ahead and log off and then log um, back on to Dave's session, and I hope that you'll join me there. And then we'll uh, we'll go ahead and put a wrapper on the day with the tools at eTrade.com. Thanks for joining, everybody, and I'll see you shortly. Bye-bye.